Now I'm going to do one more example just to kind of cut out all of the talking just to show you how much faster this is uh, than me going through it, you know, bit by bit. So I'm going to go back into ZBrush here. We'll just grab our startup material just like we were going to start out. We already have our square document. We know how easy that is to set up. Position our object on the screen. Go over here to ZBrush Compositor. Hit Create Substance Composite. Let's go ahead and refresh. There we go. All this stuff I know I don't want to mess with, so I'm going to go down here to the second. We can go ahead and turn off poly paint, and we're ready to start rocking and rolling. So let's do something that's going to be maybe something you'd find in a shipyard. So you know what? We'll start. Uh, we'll just stick with materials here. So we'll go in here to steel, grab steel rust, and just drag it right over here into our textures folder. And then on top of that, let's put on some wood. And if none of these are really doing it for you, maybe go down here to smart materials. Type in wood. There's a couple more options in here. And you can make your own smart materials. Essentially, a smart material is just a collection of fill layers and generators and anything that you want put in a folder and then saved as a smart material. So let's say uh, wood ship hole old, and we'll just drag this right on top of our steel. And like I said, you know, here's the folder. Here's a sharpen filter. Here's some stains on it. Here's some lighter stains. Here's some dirt applied. Here's some edges worn a little bit. Here's some dust applied. Wood fiber, secondary colors. So you see just a bunch of fill layers in here. And if you don't like this one, then just select it. Go ahead and delete that out of there. Maybe we'll take this wood chest stylized and we'll drop it over our steel. That'll work. Let's go ahead and open that up. Over here you can see there's fibers. So we can choose that fibers. And if we want to scale those a little bit more or less, uh, we can take and drag this out. So this will tile it more and then this will tile it less. So let's go ahead and make that size a little bit bigger. If there's anything in here that's not, not you don't really don't want to use it, you don't want to stay sharp in it, just go in here and just delete it out of here. If the grunge is a little much, you can turn it off. Or if you want to keep it around, but maybe drop that base color just a bit, you can do that as well. Just drop that opacity. And back here on the fibers, you can even rotate this. So you see it's going uh, left to right. Let's go ahead and rotate this around this way. Now, we only want to put wood in certain areas. So again, let's go ahead up to the top here where it says wood chest stylize. Everything in this folder I want to isolate. So I'm going to say right click again, add mask with color selection, go down here to pick color and just isolate where that wood is going to end up on my model. Let's go ahead and go back into our display properties and we'll turn on shadows. So our object, again, our displacement object will be able to cast shadows. And here, let's change that to intensive. And then one more color selection, we'll go ahead and pick the head. Now if you scroll down here to the base, you're going to see that's actually going to be controlling a lot of this color. So let's go in here and we'll just lighten that color just a bit. And on top of this wood chest, let's go ahead and add a, a paint layer. Uh, and by that I mean literally let's paint on top of here. So I'm going to put a, just a fill layer on here, we'll call it paint. We're going to go ahead and mask where this is going to go. So we're going to right click, say add a black mask. And now wherever I paint in this mask is where our paint's gonna show up. In fact, I'm gonna right click this and add a paint layer uh, just in case I need to stack some grunge or anything over this. Uh, I'll have it on its own layer. I'm gonna go in here to my brushes. I'm gonna type in paint or another one that might be useful uh, is maybe marker. You can actually use a marker brush to go in here. And if you give it enough uh, wear on this stroke, uh, it'll actually look like paint. So what I do is hold down a control, right click and press down and that'll kind of add a little bit more of the alpha in. Then I'm going to hold down control and go uh, down. I'm just going to get up and down. It's going to rotate the stroke around and then control, right click. And now I can go through here and I can literally just kind of paint. And let's right click in here. Let's go in here to flow. We'll turn that flow down just a bit. There we go. So now I'm going to go in here and we'll put a little pirate skull painted on the back here. I can tap X to invert this. And again, we'll just keep dropping that flow. This will be like if the paintbrush ran out of paint. You know, you can kind of have a little bit of ghosting paint on here. Let's go up here to All. And let's type in Paint. And you're going to see we have some effects here as well. So if you even want to go like to a handprint alpha, 
And there's actually some really good uh, brush. There we go. So there's like a grungy line brush paint in here. So those are actually cool. And there might even be some splatter brushes in here. So let's take this ink splatter. And we'll go ahead and drop some paint splatter in here like the brush got a little too wet. We'll take this, we'll go back to the brush paint layer and we've painted it in white. It actually kind of works for the skull, but of course if you want to change this color to whatever you want, uh, you can. And let's go ahead and turn off opacity and displacement. But under height, let's go over here to height and let's bump this up a little bit so we can take this. And as we bump up this height, you're going to see we're going to give that paint layer we're painting on uh, a little bit of height information. So it looks like it's got a nice thick paint on there. And you're also going to notice as I move this layer around, actually let's take this white and we'll dumb it down just a little bit so it's not pure white. There we go. So you're going to see this wood is very matte and this paint is very glossy. Again, that's just a material up here. So if we have the paint selected and the roughness, we can say make it super glossy roughness or very matte roughness. But we'll go ahead and keep that like it's nice, fresh, uh, wet paint on here. And also while I'm moving this light around, you may notice that you know, the steel is okay and the wood's okay. It's a little bit boring. Uh, and if I tap C on my keyboard, that'll cycle through the channels. Here's my albedo or my base color up here. Here's my metallic. Here's my roughness. And again, the darker our roughness is, the more shiny it is. And where we painted that skull, it's going to be shinier. So as I cycle through my channels, you'll see, and there's my height information I've given there uh, to my painted matte material. And then if I hit M on my keyboard, that goes back to just the material. So now you're going to see again, when I go here, I keep cycling through my channels or just go to roughness. Everything is pretty plain, like the metal itself. This is the roughness of breaking up the metal. Um, the roughness on the wood is actually really boring. So let's spice that up a little bit. So let's go back to material. And above this wood, I'm going to do another fill layer. And right now this fill layer has all the channels turned on. However, as I start getting rid of some of these, you're going to see as I turn off roughness, it's not going to affect that roughness anymore. So here it is affecting everything with the roughness that's on that fill layer. Here it's going away. Here the metallicity is going away, so that metallicity comes back for these areas. And then if I turn off color, it's not affecting anything. However, what I want to do is I'm going to go back here to roughness and turn that channel on. So now this fill layer right here is affecting roughness. And if I want to, you know, as I turn this off and on, you're going to see the wood's getting shinier. Let's go in here and say... Call it roughness breakup. Let's go back here to our grunges and let's just choose a grunge that'll kind of break this up in a cool way. Maybe grunge leak spots. So I'm going to take this and just drop it right into my roughness color. And now if I go over here or just hit C to go back in a channel, you're going to see my roughness here. It's not affecting the paint layer because the paint layer is actually over it, but everything else underneath it is getting affected by that new roughness. So now if I hit M to go back into material and then pass my light over this, you're going to see the wood roughness is broken up a little bit. It's a little shiny for my taste. And really I want it to be, you know, and it's actually breaking up the roughness on the metal too. Um, I can dial that in. One thing I can do is you might think, okay, I'm going to go into this roughness breakup. And since the roughness channel is on, if I take this opacity and drop it down, it'll drop uh, the opacity of that roughness. And you're going to see that's not the case because it's really dropping the opacity on the base color that's selected here. However, we don't have a base color turned on. What we have to do is go in here to roughness. And now when I drop this opacity down, you're going to see that wood roughness is going to kind of dial in and out. So it's already kind of broken up. And if you want to see what that's doing again, just hit C. That'll go back to roughness. And now as we drop this opacity down and bring it up, it's like, okay, there's the original wood. And then now we're in introducing a little bit of breakup here. Now in this case, I just want to break up this super bright white with just a little bit of uh, darkness. So I can go in here and even change this blending mode to say multiply or screen. Screen will actually make everything, it'll keep that base roughness and then make it even more rough where it gets bright white. Uh, multiply is going to do the opposite where it's going to really introduce a lot of dark. So it's going to make it very shiny. Or if you want, you can just keep it at normal. And then just dial down uh, that opacity to taste. Again, we're just introducing a little bit of breakup to that wood. So we'll hit M again. And now you can see that roughness breakup affecting that wood. And just like we did in the previous videos, if you're happy with this render, you can hit tab, just screen grab this out of here. We didn't do any post-processing, so if you want to, just go in here to File, Export Textures. I'm just going to throw this on my desktop here. Choose 2D View. Just hit Export. 
And there you go. There's your 2D view exported. You can go in here to iRay. Just choose a clear color or background, hold down shift and rotate your light around. So get a little bit more realistic metal, a little bit more realistic reflections. Again, go in here and change out your lighting as needed. And if you're happy with this, go in here to your render settings button and then go down here. You can change your override your viewport resolution to really crank up the scale, uh, then just save your render or just share it directly to ArtStation. Now let's say, you know, putting these light, turning these lights around is okay and changing, you know, these views are going in here to post-process, post activating your post-process, maybe turning on a little bit of glare, changing that to bloom, 